Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 10, Writing and Interpreting qualities, inter Inequality Statements in Equality Statements Involving Rational Numbers. Remember, a rational number is a number that can be expressed as a fraction or a decimal, so it could be 1 half, 2.5, or negative 3, those are all rational numbers, because I can write that as 4 over 1, negative 3 over 1. Rational numbers. Okay. Inequality meaning less than or greater than. Not equal. Okay. Opening exercise. I had money in my pocket going jing a ling a ling And I asked the students, the amount of money I have in my pocket is less than $5, but greater than 4 One possible value of the amount of money in my pocket is what? Okay, so the actual dollar value I had in my pocket for class was four dollars and twenty-five cents. So they were to put a possible value. Some guess four dollars and ten cents. Some guess four fifty. One student got it right, four dollars and twenty-five cents, and so on. As long as it was more than four dollars and less than five dollars, any value, as long as we only go out two decimal places, would be a dollar value. Could be in my pocket. Part B says write an inequality statement comparing the possible value of money in my pocket to four. So the amount of money in my pocket is greater than four dollars. So write an equality statement comparing the possible values of money in my pocket to four. So the possible amounts of money in my pocket, if I use the dollar symbol, is greater than four. Write an inequality statement comparing the possible values of the money in my pocket to five. So I would say the amount in my pocket is less than five dollars. So if I use the dollar symbol, the amount of money in my pocket is less than five. Okay. Exercise one through four. Graph your answer from the opening exercise part A to the number line below. I will use the actual value I had, which was four dollars and twenty-five cents. So, a lot of students at first started out with zero here and went right this way and left this way, which is a common procedure if we're dealing with values around zero. But we're dealing with numbers less than five and greater than four. So, I want to deal with things around four and five. So, I might start down here and maybe put four right there. I'm not going any lower than four, so it's, I can start at that value. I don't care about three, two, one, zero, and negatives. I just want to know what's happening. So then I need to come up with a unit of measurement. So I had students count that there were 11 of these. So if we did $4.10, $4.20, so on by tens, So I went from $4 to $5 and then anything in between. And it fits perfectly using 10 cents. So I will use that. Okay, so I had $4.25 in my pocket, which is halfway between $4.20 and $4.30. So $4.25 right here. Okay. So graph your answer from the opening exercise on the number line. So graphing means to put a dot and label the amount if it's not a unit of measurement on your scale. It says also graph the points associated with 4 and 5 on the number. Okay. There's 5. There's 4. 3. Explain in words how the location of the three numbers on the number line supports the inequality statements in the opening exercise of part B and C. So here I could just say 
425 is greater than $4. And 425 is less than $5. I guess I could have dollar signs for all of this. Okay? And then another way of writing this, instead of saying this and this, we could actually write it on the number line like here's four, five's down here, and in between is four. So 425 is greater than 4, or you could say 4 is less than 425. 425 is less than 5. Okay? Example 1. Write an inequality statement to show a relationship among the following shoe sizes. 10 and a half, 8 and 9. From least to greatest. Please underline this every time I give you a least greatest or greatest least question. So you realize what you're asked to do. So the least, meaning the smallest. Well, 10 and a half, 8 and 9, 8 is the smallest. And it says write one inequality. So if I did this, which is the order from least to greatest, that is a list. This is a list. But it says write an inequality. So this is not the answer. The correct answer would be 8 is less than 9, which is less than 10. Instead of commas, we want actual inequality symbols. Now it says from greatest to least. So if I list them greatest to least, it would be 10 and 1 half, 9, 8. But it said write one inequality. So my answer is going to be 10 and 1 half is greater than 9 is greater than. Example 2, interpreting data and writing inequality statements. Mary is comparing the rainfall totals for May, June, and July. The data is reflected in the table below. Fill in the blanks below to create inequality statements that compare the changes in total rainfall. Changes in total rainfall for each one. The right most common one. So what we're talking about this column here. So these values just came from calculating the so last year, we got 3.7 inches in rain. This year, we got 2.3. So we got a minus 1.4 inches this year. So it's 2.3 minus 3.7. But in June, we got more rain than last year. So 3.8 minus 3.5 is 0.3. And 3. So all they're doing here is subtracting, 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 and getting these values in this column. So now it says, write one inequality to order the changes in total rainfall from least to greatest. The well, negatives on the number line come first. So negative 1.4 is less than 0 0.3 is less than 0. From greatest to least is 0 0.5 is greater than 0 0.3 is greater than negative In this case, does the greatest number indicate the greatest change in rainfall? So the greatest number here on the number line is 0 0.5. Is that the greatest change? Okay, so this is a tricky question, but let me explain it. If we have a number line, actually think about this. I will pause the video for you. Okay, that's a little straighter. All right, so. Here's what we're talking about. If I put zero here and I go by tenths, one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five, six, seven, eight, nine tenths, one, and I have 0 0.3, which is three tenths, then 0.3 is right here. Zero point three. Point five is right here, which is zero point five. Okay. And finally, I have a negative 1.4. Negative 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths, 6 tenths, 7 tenths, 8 tenths, 9 tenths, 10 tenths, negative 1. 1 and 1, 1 and 1 tenths, 1 and 2 tenths, 1 and 3 tenths, 
negative 1 and 4 tenths is right here. Okay? So if this was a decrease in rainfall, these were increases in rainfall. It says, does the greatest number, 0 0.5, greatest number is 0 0.5, furthest to the right on our number line, does that indicate the greatest change in rainfall? Well, change means how much did it change from 0. And this distance it goes from 0 to 0.5 is 0.5, so it changed by 0.5. But if I go up and I go the other direction, from 0 to negative 1.4, that is a distance of 1.4. Greatest change is this longer distance from 0. Anything being compared to 0 is change. So 0.3 was an increase of 3 tenths. 0.5 is an increase of 5 tenths. 1.4 negative, I should have here, is a decrease of 1.4. So the biggest change is negative 1.4. Okay? So the answer to my question would be no. 1.4, negative 1.4 is the biggest change. Because it is further from zero than zero point five is. Okay. Okay. So no negative one point four is the biggest change because it is further from zero than zero point five is. Exercise five through eight. Mark's favorite football team lost yards on two back to back plays. Okay, so the first sentence is telling us we're talking about football. And I apologize to non-football fans because these types of questions are not easy to answer if you don't understand the game or care to understand the game. Everybody's different, so some like football, some don't. And if you don't, you don't know what it, how it works, then you may not be able to answer this question. So I'll explain. His favorite football team lost yards on two back-to-back -back plays. That means one play, a play in football means you do something, the whistle blows, it's done, and then you get in the line and you do it again. Play after play after play is repeated. Okay, so the, in the first play, they lost three yards. They lost one yard on the second. Write an inequality statement using integers to compare the forward progress made on each play. Okay, so all I've done so far is listed the values that they gave us. Losing three and losing one means we got pushed backwards on the field. So we're trying to advance to the right, but the defense pushed us backwards, so we didn't advance. We actually got pushed backwards. Okay, it's almost like retreat in a battle. All right, so in order to do this, I would say negative three is less than negative. And that's all this is asking us to do. Okay. Sierra had to pay school for two textbooks that she lost. One textbook cost fifty-five dollars. The other cost seventy-five dollars. Mother wrote two separate checks for each expense. Write two integers that represent the change to her mother's checking account balance. Well, if you spend money, it's a negative. So negative fifty-five dollars for one book. Negative seventy-five for the other. So there's the two integers. Okay, integer, numbers that are not decimals or fractions. Okay, then it says, then write an inequality statement that shows the relationship between these numbers. So I would say negative 55 is greater than negative 75. Okay. Seven. Jason ordered the numbers negative 70, negative 18, and negative 18.5 from least to greatest by writing the following statement. Negative 18 is less than negative 18.5 is less than negative 70. Is this a true statement? Okay, so I drew this number line for you. 
and we're all ta we're talking about all negatives. So I'm just going to throw zero over here to the right. Everything we're talking about is to the left. And if I went negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, all the way out, eventually I'd get to negative 18. And if I continue, negative 18.5 is smaller. We're going further from zero, and then finally way down here would be negative seven. So if I wrote these now in order from least, okay, least is to the left, and greatest is to the right. Numbers get bigger as we go to the right, numbers get smaller as we go to the left. And if I draw a number line and put these numbers on it, then we can clearly see that it should be negative 70. It's less than negative 18.5. That is less than negative 18. Okay? So, answering the question, it says, is this a true statement? Explain. Then I would say, no, it's not a true statement because negative 70 is less than negative 18.5, and negative 18.5 is less than negative 18. Okay, number eight. Write a real-world situation that is represented by the following inequalities. Negative 19 is less than. Explain the position on the number. Okay, so this says the coldest temperature in January. 19 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 19 degrees Fahrenheit, and the warmest temperature was 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Since the point associated with 40 degrees is above zero on a vertical number line, and negative 19 is below zero, we know that 40 is greater than negative 19. This means that 40 degrees Fahrenheit is warmer than negative 19 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so there's a very detailed explanation in these two numbers in these two. Okay, exercise nine. Closer look at the sprint. Look at the following two examples from the sprint to find the numbers in correct order. The sprint was just a worksheet that, that was in the um, teacher's manual. Uh, okay, so basically this is just one portion of that one example. It says fill in the numbers in the correct order. So I have two negative numbers and I have zero. We know negatives are always to the left of zero. So zero there. Now, is owing a quarter more than or less than owing a dollar on the number line? So as I'm going left, the number should be getting bigger negative, so that negative one is more than negative a quarter. It's more debt. So from least to greatest is negative one, negative one fourth, zero. Okay. Now it says this, these, these, this means greater than Zero is greater than any negative, and negative a quarter is greater than negative one. B, explain how the position of the numbers on the number line supports the inequality statements. Okay, so negative one is the farthest to the left on the number line, so it's the least value. Zero is the farthest right, so it's the greatest value, and negative one fourth is in between. C says create a new pair of greater than, less than, inequality statements using three other rational numbers. Okay. So here's an example. I chose 8, 0 0.5, negative 1.8. So this says 8 is greater than 1 half, is greater than negative 1.8. And negative 1.8 is less than 0 0.5, which is less than 8. Okay, that's the end of lesson 10. Go do your problem set.